Hi, this is Betko from Grinder School. Uh, this is a Grinder School short. We're doing MTT SMGs. This is a two table. I had the highest ROA in 16-18s. Uh, way, way high. Monster ROA, 18%. Uh, it was 15% overall, but been 18% for playing pretty solidly for, for about a month and a half. Uh, and uh, basically, people have very tiny ROIs in these things. They play a zillion tables. I wasn't playing quite as many tables as some of the people were, but... So they made, made making, you know, as, almost as much as I was playing twice as many tables. But I, mean, I was playing a lot of tables, but not... Not not twenty tables or anything like that. Um, so in, in just in one hand history, we'll find a lot of interesting things to go over. And this will just be a short, but uh, this is not standard at all, and I'm not even sure I like it. I think the proper play is to just fold. I don't know. I might have been in a mood at this point. Almost no regular would do this. Um, I mean, some regs feel like you should have the tight image so you can push later, but I think people usually figure out regs are up to, and so I, I prefer, you know, to have a little crazy image late, early on, so it's a little unpredictable. Now, I could see about this. It's a little bit dry, but, you know, there are three players, and I got nothing. Now I can't really represent anything, you know, because if I had a jack, how come I didn't bat it? So it doesn't really cost me that much. I'm not sure if it's a great play, to be honest. But it's just interesting the way I played it. Okay, this is non-standard. Nobody else does this. You're supposed to raise certain amounts and everything. But I mean, the guy completes. He probably doesn't have anything. And so I, I raise big like this. And you know, usually he's going to fold. I and mean, he's not very many chips. But you know, I can get him to fold on a flop too. So. Um, I don't always do it this way. Again, again, it's not a standard play. Okay, here... I mean, there are times where I might not call... Well, I think usually I'd call an open shove. But here, you have to look at this short stack. Going all in for like 14 big blinds. And this guy shoves to isolate. These guys are both random, so I think Ace King's good. This is an awful ISO shove with the King Nine offsuit. Um, anyway, probably be a pretty bad play if you fold it there. It's sort of an interesting situation. Okay, we flop the nuts, and we slow play it. Now here, I just shove. I figure he's got an ace. You know, or, or fly. I don't know if he do it with a flush draw, but, you know. So he must have been sort of bluffing there. I don't know. I mean, I can't, I don't know what he was doing. Because I kind of assumed they'd get his money. I mean, it's possible you could call and try to, you know, there is there is a two flush out there. But he, it seems unlikely he would have that. But it's kind of, it's kind of ridiculous. Um, if I flat call... He's got less than a pot size bit left, so, you know, it is hard to sell, you know, I, th I think flat calling and, 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 you know, hoping he's going to shove there. When you flat call there, he's going to figure you probably got the ace, so, just hoping he had the ace. Okay, I think this is pretty standard. Um... You gotta be ahead of the push bars range, and you, you know, you're just committed for your stack. I mean, I could have just shoved here or something. It doesn't really matter though, because these guys don't have very big stacks. So I guess it was the same as shoving when I did. But this is absolutely a standard play. Okay, limp pot. Now, he bets almost pot. I could definitely check raise here, figuring I got the best hand, but. Now he bets tiny. Now, I certainly could raise here. It depends on my read. I mean, there's something to be said for raising, trying to get more in. I think I guess he picked up a flush draw on the turn. I mean, it's a little safer when I just call because, you know, if he, if he really has me beat, I may not, not completely double him up. And I might get him to bluff. 
So that's why I played it that way. It's certainly not the only way to play it. And here I shove because this is standard for 13 big blinds and there's no ante, but I've got a good hand here. It's an above average hand. Okay, I run into a bigger hand, but I guess I hit. Um, I think there's something to be said for racing smaller in this situation. You know, if you're going to fall to the shove. Although, yeah, I probably call the the small blind. You know, I guess this I might even call the big blind. The push in earlier position is a little stronger. And, you know, it's a little bit more there. And if it was a tournament, I'd call him. But I guess I'm just trying to preserve my stack. So you take, play a little tighter in these. But this is a pretty um, iffy type of, of fold. But I, I think when I have the big stack, I'm really trying to preserve it till we get to the the bubble. You know, I, I don't want to risk it and be down to, if I call and lose, I'll be down to 5,000, so. But it's, it's, it should be a CV plus call. I mean, I could have just shoved the, that uh, king queen suited, but I think most regs play the way I would, I do it. Now here I overshove, and I guess I'm willing, there's only one big stack there, and Again, he might have ace king or something if he wants to play. So I'm going to play it. So I run into run into hand. This is a fairly standard play, I think. It'd be pretty bad to play here. You know, some people want to set mine and everything. You know, see a flop and all that. It's not not usually how you play in these things. You know, again, you're playing for for stack preservation. You know, I'll, I'll do some things that are. Aggressive. I may play a little looser than some people early on. Uh, you know, I don't have a stack. And the thing also early on is, um, it's different from a one table sit and go. There's not that much of an ICM issue early on. But um, and later I'll get pretty aggressive, and when people are going to fold a lot. But at this stage, I don't want to take too many risks. Uh, speaking of which, we just go to the full table. And I really don't like uh, my under the gun raise. And this is again as a fold for ICM reasons. Because I'm risking a big chunk of my stack. Plus, I mean, he pushed over the under the gun raise. So I'm getting 1.5 to 1. But I'm not that much better than, probably a little bit better than 1.5 to 1. So it's probably slightly CV plus call. But it's not much, not much better. I think there's a lot to be said for just, just folding the hand initially. Okay, so this is an any two cars shove. And you have to look at how big the blinds are at this point. I mean, there are times where I'd fold a hand like this in a small blind. But it also isn't that much worse than an average hand, you know. It's like, I mean, obviously you would be called by better than an average hand. He's not got, you know, he needs a fairly good hand to call here. So I just need to pick up the chips. So, uh, you know, the blind is like, effective big blinds is like six big blinds, so. I just have to shove. I actually think a fall there would be pretty bad. I mean, it depends on... But it doesn't really matter too much on your read there with, with this... With the, look at that hand skiing here. It's not that interesting. That A2, A2 because it's like a regular, you know, is going to understand the ICM, but the random will still will sort of understand intuitively or be playing scared or something. You're not going to get called that light. Now here I shove. Um, the reason I think this is absolutely correct. The reason is again the blinds are so big, so this is only seven big blinds against one player. So obviously in a tournament, as much you can shove a lot more than this. But um, and and I assume the big blind is going to call very tight. This is an awful call from the big blind with the sixes because of the ICM. Plus, you know, my range is fairly strong here. He's lucky he he was ahead. It was just, just very bad. Because if he loses, he's down to, uh, you know, he goes from the lead to being down to 1,500. I mean, with sixes, you know, he's probably like 50-50 or something. So it was a terrible play. I think I played it correctly, and I was assuming 
you know, he would play slightly rationally, but even still, you just have to go with the, with the, with the, with the, with the threes there. Here we're heads up, and I don't push any two cards here. I think people are going to call. I'm pushing almost anything, but you know, it's also maybe an image that he won't. You know, he'll see that. He knows you might, you know, not pushing every everything. But, you know, only really bad stuff like this is the shallow. And some people will say they'll push any two cards, you know, from the small blind in a tournament for 15 big blinds. But that kind of assumes people are going to get intimidated by the big push and, and are going to fold an awful lot of hands. Uh, so I, I think this is best. I mean, again, to have a certain folding range here. Yeah, I think it has to be a really bad hand. If it was like 9-2 like or something, it would be an easy... If it was three two suited, I'd shove it. I think a pretty easy shove. Okay, so that's it. I hope you learned a lot. It's interesting to see how much of interest, you know, we, the hand history covered eighty four hands, and and I didn't show you how I got all that stack. Also, I think one hundred percent, but uh, well, I guess I did with that, that double up. But uh, I'm not gonna show you everything, but just going going over the hands that are of interest. There are a lot of interesting hands, a lot of interesting situations. Of course, I sometimes create some interesting situations, as you can see. Um, and notice, you know, how I use aggression in server point. Like when people were showing weakness early on, you know, raising the limps and so on. And, and um, you know, when, it, when it's late in the tournament and I can push by and pick up chips or whatever. But then, you know, playing pretty cautious and a lot of raised falls I was making. Uh, sort of, you know, very pretty tight raised falls. And... I wouldn't have done in a tournament.